All right, so the other useful um, graphic that is used to represent a project schedule is the so-called activity network diagram, um, typically used to determine the critical path associated with the project, also use it to compute the total duration of the project. And more importantly, the different slack values associated with the uh, various activities or tasks aligned with the project. Sometimes your slack would be referred to as float or total float. So everything you see as TF here would be the slack value, the total float. Um, so uh, like I said, typically use this to identify the critical path. Key elements here is uh, uh, alias date, uh, early, uh, early start date, early finish date, late start date, late finish date, the duration associated with the task, the slack, um, and the activity name. Um, these entities such as early start date, late start date, early finish, and last finish, including slack also would be derived. So the only input that goes to the different activities is the duration and the activity name. Um, and I should mention here that um, uh, as you are reading up online, probably different conventions would be used to represent the various activities. But the convention of the notation I'm using in these slides is like so. So each activity will be represented as a block. A block will have the early start date on the top left corner, followed by the duration, right? And then finally, still on the top, the early finish date. The middle number would be the activity name. Um, the numbers that appear on the bottom row would be the light, late start date, the slack, and the last finish uh, uh, date in sequence. Um, so again, the input for the activity network is typically, or typically, it's essentially your task IDs or the task names, the associated durations, and the dependencies that exist amongst the tasks. So again, you, you remember that I mentioned that one of the very first things you're going to have to do is come up with the WBS, or Wake Breakdown Structure. What you provide as input to, as you're coming up with the Wake Breakdown Structure, what you do is you come up with tasks, how long it's going to take for you to work on those tasks, and potential dependencies associated with the different tasks. That's all you need. So using these three different values, or aspects, we can actually derive an activity network. So simple process we're going to use here as we're working through an example of creating a network activity diagram associated with these, uh, these particular tasks is uh, we'll first of all create a dependency tree for all the tasks. And then we will go through a forward pass so that we can compute the duration of the project. And then we go through what's called a backward pass so that we can compute the slack, right? Associated with the different activities. And then once we are done with that, um, of course, we, uh, at the end we compute the duration and then we also identify the critical path and the slack values associated with the different activities. Yeah, so forward pass, backward pass. Um, and in the process, what we will be doing is we'll be also uh, computing these values here, early start date, early finish date. Uh, so during the forward pass, using the activity name and the duration as input, we compute the early start date, early finish date. Using the backward pass, we compute the uh, late start date uh, and last finish date and the slack. Easy process, we'll look at this just now. Okay, so we're going to start off by just creating our dependency tree. Um, and we... Uh, Bear with me, we're going to take a few baby steps so that people understand exactly how to do this. So we do this task, task by task for us to build this dependency tree. <clears throat> we start with task number one. We notice that uh, task number one has uh, a duration of, well, task number one, the dependency tree only needs the, um, the only input we need here is the task ID and this dependency. So task number one has not any dependency, right? So zero dependency, so what we do is we write a block, T1 there, right? Remember I said uh, early start, early finish, late start, late finish, 
slack task name. We go to the next task, task two. Task two has no dependencies, so we just put the block for task two. We go to task three. Task three has a dependence on task number one, so we draw an arrow originating from one going to three, right? Three is dependent on one. Task four has no dependencies, so we just write the block. Task, task five is dependent on T2 and T4. So we draw an arrow um, from two and four going into five. Two, four, arrow pointing to five. Task six has dependencies on task one and task two. Six, task one and task two. Task seven is dependent on T1, yeah? arrow pointing to T7. T8 has a dependence on T4, arrow from T4 to T8. T9 has a dependence on T3 and T6, so arrows from T3 and T6 going to T9. Yeah, T3, T6 going to T9. T10 has a dependence on T7 and T8, so from T7 and T8, arrows pointing to T10. Yeah, T7, T8. T11 has a dependence on T9. Right? T11 has a dependence on T9, so arrow from T9 to T11. I mean, finally, T12 is dependent on T10 and T11, so arrows from T10 and T11 going to T12. So we would have created our dependency tree. And then what we do is we indicate the durations associated with all these different activities. I mean, what we could have done is, as we are writing the different blocks here, we could have been taking note of the durations for the different blocks. But what I'm doing in this walkthrough is, uh, after I'm done with the dependency tree, I, I just uh, indicate the different durations associated with all the different activities, right? So once you indicate the durations, you then go through um, the forward pass. So the way that you go through the forward pass is you start with the initial tasks, right? Tasks that don't depend on anything at all. Um, it doesn't matter really. You can you can you can start with the very first task. In this case, is I'm going to start with I'm going to go through the tasks in sequence. So T1, T2, T3, T4, all the way up to T12. Because T1 is the start, starting task, the early start date is zero. The early, remember, notation that I have here, early start date, early finish, duration, activity. Yeah. So for the beginning activities, T1 is the beginning activity, early start date is zero. You compute the early finish date by adding early start plus duration. So zero plus 10 gives you 10. For T2, again, start is zero. So we add zero to 15 to get 15 for early finish. For T3, the early start is going to be the early finish for the preceding task. Yeah? So you see arrow pointing from T1 to T3. T3 has a dependence on T1, so early start here is 10. 10 plus 15 gives us 25. T4, if you notice T4, um, is the very first task start is zero as well because uh, there's no arrow pointing to it. So zero plus 10 gives us 10 as the early finish. T5 on the other hand has a somewhat unique um, trait here. It has two arrows pointing to it. Now, when you have two arrows pointing to an activity, two or more arrows pointing to an activity, uh, and you want to compute the early start date, what you do is you get the maximum value of the early finish dates associated with the tasks on which that particular task is dependent on. So in this case, T5 has a dependence on T2 and T4. So we shall get the maximum between T2 and T4, which is 15, right? It's either 15 or 10. So 15 is maximum. We put 15 here. We add 15 and 10, we get 25. We go to T6. T6 has a dependence on T1 and T2. We'll get maximum between 10 and 15, which is why we'll have in here 15. We go to T7, one arrow pointing to T7, we just pull the 10. We go to uh, T8, T8 has a dependence on T4, we just pull 10. 
we go to T9, T9 has a dependence on T3 and T6, so we pull the maximum, which is 25. We go to T10, T10 has a dependence on T7 and T8, so we get the maximum, which is 35. We go to T11, T11 has a dependence on T9, yeah, so we just pull 40. Finally, T12 has a dependence on T10 and T11, we get the maximum, the maximum happens to be the same, so we just pull 50 here. And then finally, we add 50 and 10 and get 60. 60 is, I guess what we might call a magic number here, this is our duration, our planned project duration would be 60 in this case. Not very hard here. Okay, so in terms of the backward pass, we pretty much do the opposite, right? For us to compute the backward pass. We start the, with the last task, yeah? And what we do is uh, we, we say, we, we work with the last, so early start, early finish, late start, late finish. Our late finish is going to be for the last task is going to be the early finish, right? Which is 60, bring down the 60. And then instead of adding, we are subtracting to get the late start. So 60 minus 10 will give us 50. And then we start working backwards. Um, we, we go to uh, 11, right? Uh, and 11 will just pull the late start, which is going to be our late finish for the, uh, preceding t uh, task, and then we subtract 10 and get 40. We go to 10, we do the same thing, we get 50, put it there, right? Subtract 15 to get 35. We get uh, to T9, uh, we pull the uh, 40 here, and then we subtract 15. We come to T8, we just pull the 35, right? And subtract 25 from 35. Come to T7, we do the same thing, um, we push the 35 here, subtract 20 to get 15, and then we come to T6, put the 25, subtract 5 to get 20, um, and then we come to T5. Now T5 is a pretty interesting case here. Why? Because T5 has T5 has uh, no it has no T5 is a similar case as this particular task here because there's no arrow where it points to or there's no task that is dependent on it we just bring down the 25 similar to what we did here subtract 10 and then we get uh, 15 here t4 now if you look at t4 right t4 has two tasks that it depends uh, that are dependent on it now what we do during the backward pass is we get the minimum of the uh, of the values corresponding to the late start dates. So what is the minimum between 10 and 15? It's 10. So we bring the 10 here. Yeah. T3, right? One arrow here, we just bring 25 from here to here. T2, T2 has two task, tasks that depend on it. So what do we do? We get the minimum between 20 and 15, which is 15. Right, and then we subtract uh, 15, 15 to get zero. And then finally for T1, perfect case, and I didn't know that this example would actually result into this, but you realize that there are three tasks that are dependent on T1, T3, T7, and T6. Same process, get the minimum between 20, 15, and 10, which is obviously 10. And then you subtract 10 from 10 to get zero. And you'd have finished with your backward pass, right? Uh, so if you notice, the only thing we are missing from our activities is the slack, right? Which we're going to uh, compute shortly. But before we compute the slack, it turns out that using the information we have right now, we can identify the critical paths or critical path or critical paths. We can have more than one critical path. We look, we 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 saw this from this particular example: two critical paths. Um, so how do you identify the critical path? Well, we just identify the activities which have same values for the early start, late start, and le early finish, late finish. So if these numbers are the same, the activities whose numbers, this is equal to this, this is equal to this, 
will form the critical path. Observe, if you follow through with this path, all the activities along this path have similar values top to bottom, right? Same goes for this path here, this path, and this path here, right? So we have how many critical paths? One, two, three, four critical paths. If any of the activities that lie on these paths are delayed, then the project will be delayed as a whole. Remember we computed the project duration as, as being 60 days. If we delay any of these activities on these critical paths, the project du duration will be greater than 60 days. Right. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so how do we compute the slack or the total float, if you will? Well, turns out that uh, all you have to do is just uh, subtract either the, remember this is early start, early finish, late start, late finish. Either you subtract uh, early start from late start or early finish from late finish. The value that you get by subtracting these numbers, this and this, or this and this, will be the slack or the total float. So it's as simple as being that, right? Um, and you notice that all the activities that fall within the critical paths will have a slack equal to zero, right? So we are just, uh, ooh, I'm so sorry here. There's a bit of a mistake here. If you notice, uh, I do apologize. There are some values that are not supposed to be zero. For instance, uh, uh, and I do apologize for that. I'll have to change this at some stage. I will, actually. Last piece is the point. I will change this. If you look at some of these uh, activities, like activity T7, for instance, 15 minus 10 is not zero, it's five, right? So these will need to be changed. 25 minus 20 is five, not zero, right? Okay, so, but the key thing here is that uh, the other way of identifying the critical path is you check for activities which have a, a slack equal to zero will form the critical path.